Well, 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 well. Is this thing working? Hello, hello, hello. Is this thing working? Wow. Okay, so that ain't working. Okay, the white box underneath me is not working. That sucks. Can anybody hear me? Can you hear me? Testing, testing. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to my channel, Black Dragon Biker TV. And as always, we'd like to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is in the world that you happen to be. And um, we are testing some new software out to see if it works uh, and how delayed uh, everything is going to be whatever. I'm actually on my webcam. Uh, I haven't done that before. So, um, I see you out there, Christopher Robinson. If you, uh, can hear me, say something back to me. This is, uh, our new podcasting software. So we'll be podcasting and we will be, um, broadcasting live. Good evening from Los Diablos MC, Nebraska. Good evening to you. I think there's like a 30-second delay in this software. Um, wow. So I should be seeing uh, the comment should be streaming here. I don't know why we don't have a chat up. That uh, is interesting. So, uh, with no chat, let's just do something else here. Try this out. That doesn't work too well. I don't like that. (laughs) Okay, so we won't do that. Let's do something else here. All right. So we're testing out this new software here to see if it works. So, uh, let's see. Chris Harris, Oklahoma City, good to see you. Thomas Rayfield. Oh, hear me just fine. Great, great, great. That took a while to come in, though. (laughs) So, uh, this is my new platform here. We have a bunch of new toys. And uh, can you guys hear this? guys hear that um so that's our new uh broadcasting software we're trying to do some things here um see how some of this stuff works kind of interesting here um this is a question and answer session as well tonight so feel free to ask me any questions you might have But uh, I got a whole bunch of new features in my new software platform. So one of the features is um, 
we can uh, call people now. You guys can call me on the show. Let's test that out and see if that works. We're going to call one of our new writers, Diablo. <clears throat> hey! Who? Biker Who? Trash. What's yeah. up? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. Great. Absolutely wonderful. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. Um, can you see me? Can I see you? Are you are you not watching this on video, huh? Well, I was until you called. <laughs> wonderful. How are you, man? Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. So, uh, we're testing out this software. So, did you, how did it look when you were watching it before I... Uh, it looked to me like people were responding to what you were saying very fast, but you weren't seeing their response right away. I saw a thing that said the response. If I'm looking on this, the response is, um, I think it's 30 seconds or so behind. So I've got to discover how to get a proper uh, chat window up here. I thought I had a chat window, but uh, it says it's not working. But that's why we do the testing. I'm sorry that the audience has to be the guinea pig. That chat's not working. Let's see if this chat works. I assume we're live. We are live. Okay. Okay, so that's not working. That sucks. Um, good, I got you on here. Let me see if this this part works. Okay, let me add someone. So everybody, Biker Trash is a writer here on our show. Let me... Uh, we're going to now call the founder of the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation and add him on to the program. Hello. <clears throat> Father, you on here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I'm here. Uh, Biker Trash, are you on? I am here, but I didn't hear who just came on. The father of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation is on. Respect to you. Respect to you. Thank you for uh, being here. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being on the show. And now we have, uh, so you're supposed to be able to bring, so that's two of you guys on one phone. Now let's see if we can't. Add somebody to the next phone. Thank you, Stephen Wanamaker, for uh, those kind words. So if you guys are sending me uh, messages, I'm probably maybe 30, 40 seconds behind. As a matter of fact, somebody send me a test message and see how far behind I actually am. So we're going to call another person, another one of the writers on the show. And we're going to do that from this phone. So we have this phone with two people on it. We could not complete your call. Please try again. Huh. Wonder what that's all about. Do you want my mom's number? Huh? We could not complete your call. No. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, let's see. Wonder why that didn't work. Let me try this one. How come, I, how come I feel like I'm on Jerky Boys? We could not complete your call. What's, <laughs> what's Jerky Boys? Are you serious? What's Jerky Boys? Oh, my. Am I supposed I'm to know? I'm curious, too. They did prank calls. Oh. Like how many years ago? Is this, like, old? Hello? Oh, yeah. It's like the 90s. Hey. Uh, is this Merlin? Yes, it is. Okay, so we have the executive producer, Merlin's on the show. We've got uh, Paul Pitt Perry, the uh, uh, father of the Black Sabbath Nation. 
And uh, we have Biker Trash, another writer on the show. Wow. And Merlin the Magician. And Biker Trash the Demon. And Black Dragon. Man, we got some toys here. All right, so uh, Merlin, are you watching me or by chance, or did I mess that up when you called? <laughs> no, I'm driving down the highway. Oh, you're a trucking, are you? You're a trucking. Yes, sir. Now we're gonna try this microphone out. How does this microphone sound? Testing, Sounds testing. Good. And we're gonna go back to this microphone right here. How's that? <coughs> okay. So, do you guys want to talk? Okay, let's let me try some of our sound effects. Now, this sound effect, you should hear the music, the sound go from your right ear to your left ear. Did you hear that? Yeah, somebody getting it. Okay, don't be so non-enthusiastic, guys. This is terrible. <laughs> well, I heard a, I, I heard it sounded got... like a. I heard it sounded like a motorcycle, but you've been very, very broken up for a few. So yeah, I didn't hear what you were saying. I'm broken up. Let me see. Let me take. Yeah. A, take one of these microphones out. I'm broken up. You say. Well, you were. You're fine now. Hmm. And I got my headset on, so I only have one speaker. <laughs> now, am I broken up? No. Testing, nope. testing, testing. Okay. Just, do... uh... So how many people do we have watching us right now? Let's see if I can't uh, pull up my other computer here. Wearing your, you're not wearing your dragon's uh, cap tonight, huh? Uh, no. Well, everybody, just want to say good evening and how you doing, Father and Demon and Boss. Hey, it's good to talk to you guys, man. I'm I'm just sitting up here. With my mouth hanging wide open, and saying, "Wow, we on a, we're on a real show, huh?" Well, oh yeah, we are. I guess we kind of are. How exciting! <laughs> oh wow, yeah, I'm looking at this. This is kind of delayed. That's really crazy. Okay, so we've only got. Uh, is it? Oh, you got to love people with bright lights. That's how we're going to be famous. <laughs> uh, so, this thing is on. Uh, so, I guess I'll kind of start something. <clears throat> so, Mr. Perry, what would you say is uh, some of the your first challenge is getting uh, Black Sabbath started. Well, the first challenge was to get everybody good bikes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, right. Then once we got started, and every you know, everybody started practicing on my bike, you know, and everybody just broke off and said they stay out getting their own. And from that point. Here we are, almost 50 years later. And it was a lie. Who designed your patch? Was there was there a name attached to that? Uh, well, his name was, uh, we called him, uh, his name was Mitch. We called him Mitch. 
but right. we had two Mitches in the club. But this Mitch was uh, he was kind of like a jack of all trades, and you know we didn't really know what kind of design we wanted. And and he said, "Hey guys, I got an idea. Next time we meet up, I'll have it for you." All right. And sure enough, next time we met up, he he had that drawing, man. And it was like, wow, it was us. Because, you know, we were, we were going through that chopper stage back then, you know. Right. Everybody wanted a chopper. Well, some people still do. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of wish I, I had a, I'd have hung on a, at least one of them that I had, you know. Right, but right. probably if I'd have hung on to every bike that I, I had, I probably had about 40 bikes around here. <laughs> it's kind of like old cars, you know, you wish you'd have hung on to that, oh. that 50 something Chevy that you had, you know, that you took for granted. Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah, so I, I had a lot of bikes, man. Hey, you know. So, uh, what was when you guys first rolled out with your new patches? What was some of the first responses you got? Well, actually, we was kind of like a, 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 a one bike town. So, like you know, we were proud to go show them to the to the Cobras. That was the big club that was in town at that mm -hmm. particular time. You know. Mm -hmm. Did they we, ro we rode up on them on the on a Saturday, you know. They was the only ones that had clubhouse then, you know. Right. Of course, we we started our membership drive across the street from their clubhouse, which was in a park, which was uh, like Ocean View Park. And uh, we looked forward to riding up on them, you know. Right. On, on the weekend, because they would always have the weekend parties and stuff, you know. What sets your club apart from them? Um, I think because we were a younger, a younger crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, their members were were not say a lot older than us, but they were older than us. Right. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the majority of their members were, were older members, you know, and like we were just, I guess we were probably in our mid twenties, you know, and we had our own idea of what we wanted to do. Right. And then we were new, you know, we knew what we wanted to do. We wanted to be different, you know. Right. Yeah, we wanted to be different there, and we were. We, we were like the, the party. We were the party people. <laughs> and we still are, you know. When, when we show up, the party really turns on. Uh, definitely a goal worth having. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, you know, wherever we went, you know, like, shit, we were welcome. You know, the party didn't start until we got there. They all say, we've been waiting for y'all. Yeah, we know, but we can't hardly wait. Let's get this mother started. Man, it used to be, oh, man. There were times when we would ride back and forth to each other's clubhouse, you know, like we couldn't couldn't live without one another, you know, back and forth to L.A., you know. They yeah. they ride us a piece of way home. Next thing you know, next thing you know they didn't roll down, man. Well, we might have ride on down, see what y'all doing then. We gonna so called ride them piece away home, and next thing you know, we in L.A. <laughs> you know? Well, we did yeah, that so, for you. Much, so much of this <laughs> stuff is about <clears throat> making connections and social social interactions, and uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, I completely relate to what you're saying. Even even now, um, you just call somebody up out of the blue and hey, what you guys doing? And you hook up and you do something. Yeah. They reopen them, you know, we ride up to their clubhouse and then they ride back down to our clubhouse and be back and forth, you know, <laughs> for months. You know, we had some guys that, you know, just ran away from home, you know. 
So how has it changed over the years? How's it changed over the years? Yeah, how has uh, it changed? You know, t- you know, as far as California is concerned, is is not as is not as as volatile as East Coast. You know, yeah. we like, and to me, we're like in Disneyland. You know, you know, East Coast is like Afghanistan or some shit. You know, yeah. Well, we do, the, we do the stuff to have fun. <laughs> yeah, well, we do out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I don't remember really having any problems with anybody, you know. But then, you know, we didn't have growth problems then, you know. Yeah. As soon as you start growing and stuff, people start, you know, they start hating on you, you know. Well, Simply from, for no reason at all, you know. Just because you're trying to grow. And people like what you're doing. You know, when I asked that question, I kind of had something in mind. I was just thinking about the internet and social media oh and, and gps and people listening to music and oh you know, man it's just it's like so much distractions that you could take off and you go to the <laughs> next town and it's a whole new world yeah it, it, and it really is you know uh, like i said uh to get to come from the west coast to get to go to the east coast you know like uh, the east coast is like like day and night to the West Coast, to me. Yeah. You know, like they just, uh, you know, it's too much pressure or, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know. I'm I'm for growth, you know, like, cause to me, we don't want to end up like the cowboys or the dinosaurs, you know. So you should yeah. let in all clubs, okay? Because you can't have too many. It's enough room for every damn body, okay? Shouldn't be no limitation. I, I mean, I think I think the philosophy that I've heard is get along or get out. You know, we're, we don't really want troublemakers. For those of you who are just tuning in, we are testing new software. Thanks for tuning in to Black Dragon Biker TV and Black Dragon Biker News Network, Biker News You Can Trust. We have uh, two of our writers that those of you who have been following this page. Uh, we have Biker Trash and we have Merlin. And we also have the treat of having the father of the mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation on. And we are interviewing him and testing out uh, this new software and these new toys. Merlin is uh, interviewing the father right now, so uh, we will go back to it's that. Biker trash. It's biker trash talking, actually. Oh, was that biker trash? <laughs> I yeah. Thought, uh, forgive me. Biker trash is interviewing uh, uh, the father right now, so we'll get back to that. Merlin, are you still on the line, or did we lose you? No, I'm still here. Okay, great, great. So everything's working. So we have two phones up and working. Uh one phone has two people on it, and then we have a second phone, so we can have up to six people interviewing, or maybe even nine interviewing in the conversation. With me, that's ten. And uh, we have all kinds of inputs and sources. It's just really cool. So um, these are the latest uh, in software. This is our jingle. That, that's our jingle that we start the show with. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to the show. And we're glad you're here. Many more things in store. Thanks for tuning in to the show. And I'm glad you're here. We got Merlin. And we got the devil biker trash. And the father of the mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you're here with us every day. We don't need crickets. We need you guys to be here. Yeah! This is part of the show. Well, we won't be doing this part anymore. Just testing out the stuff. Yeah! I'd like to thank you all for tuning in.
We're bound to be famous with that. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I, I think Boss is having too much fun with the new toys. <laughs> we might be famous. <laughs> All right, so back to the interview. <laughs> so so uh, I'm going to ask a question. I think everybody wants to know. Mm-hmm. What's your drink of choice? My drink of choice. Yeah. Well, you know, I I, I drink them all. You know, but if I, if I had my, I, it probably would be vodka and cranberry or something like that. Oh. Okay. Well, not, well awesome. now, now I know what to have on hand when you're coming through Yuma, but you never tell me when you're coming oh. through Yuma, Father. I'm sorry. I, you were breaking up. So say that again, please. Hey, Father, this is Merlin. Now I know, now hey, I know what to have on hand. When you come through Yuma, vodka and uh, cranberry juice. <laughs> so you're right. Through and not, and, 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 but you always come through and you don't let me know. By the time I know you've been through, you're all, all, all over in Texas. Broke down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, like, uh, I apologize for flying through there. You know, I, I when I came through there, I was on a mission. I only had one thing on my one track mind, you know. But it won't happen again. You can believe I'll come look for you. <laughs> Sounds good. And at least, so at least have a drink with you. Hey, hey, yeah. Well, I live uh, about fifty miles north of San Diego, toward Escondido, closer to uh, Temecula. You know, actually between Temecula and San Diego. So, if any way you come, just call me first. You know, that way I I can be sure to round you up. You don't go too deep in into town. You know, and have to come too far yeah. back. Well, if you're taking no notes, problem. I like tequila. Was that a double question? I mean, oh, I was saying if Merlin's taking notes, I like tequila. Oh, okay, yeah, well, of course, I drink tequila too. <laughs> you know, you got tequila too. I feel like, like you know, kind of like watered down drink, cause, cause you know, I'm, a, I'm, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a smoker, not, not really a drinker, really. <clears throat> you like cigars? No, <laughs> wrong smoke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I'm not into. Dude, you know, I used to smoke cigarettes probably 20 years ago. I probably smoked 20 years. You know, Isn't that close to that. That crap no more. Okay. And we now have uh, Tia tuning into hey, the show. Sir. Hey, T. What's up, hey, Hey, sis, how you doing? Hey. Oh, there's a bunch of people on the left. <laughs> it's a regular show. We are actually we're actually oh. live on Facebook right now. <laughs> Everyone, T. Oh, are you? Mm-hmm. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, Tia has just tuned in, and... Uh, we're good to have her. So we've got Paul Stacker out there in Phoenix, Arizona. We got uh, Stephen uh, Winnemaker. Uh, so we got we got a lot of people. Stephen Winnemaker. We got David. Uh, 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 my goodness, I can't read. We got David. Um, Fulgare. I not I know I'm not saying that name right. Got David Fulgara, Christopher Robinson, Drew Black. He says everything sounds pretty good. Uh Richard Betts Sr. So this is really cool. We got a lot of folks on watching uh our first uh podcast video show with microphones and we now have Tia, Merlin, Biker Trash, Pep, me. We got five people on the line. And how does it sound? Does it sound all right, folks? How's the the sound level? What's the sound quality like? Uh, It sounds fine. I think the hardest issue is not talking over each other. We have to say. I don't have to agree with you there. Maybe we have to say over like we used to do in the military. Breaker, breaker. So, so you know to step up, huh? <laughs> so I, I did have another question. Uh, so 
it's my understanding you guys started out as a blacks only club, but that didn't take long to change. And uh, I didn't know if you uh, wanted to describe that transition. Yeah, well, you know, like it, 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 you know, it, we started out like that, you know, and you know, because back then, you know, it, it, it wasn't cool to be called black nut, you know, and. And, you know, we just took it and took the name and ran with it, you know, because nobody else wanted it. And next thing we know, you know, that that became what there was, there was, a, there was a white guy and an Indian. Uh, his, the white guy was named Staff Acre and the Indian, we called him Running Wolf, you know, and, and they just came along and man, they just loved our style and man. You know, we didn't ever did have any hangups. You know, we just didn't think nobody wanted to join us. You know, okay, that was my thought. You know, because you know, when we started out, nobody wanted to be called black anything. You know what I'm saying? But we were we we chose the name and we stuck with it. And you know, we were called every damn thing under the sun. But what we were, you know, and yeah. next thing you know. Uh, we begin to Osborne. grow. Ozzy Osbourne might differ, but <laughs> did, uh, I assume they were out when you guys came up. No, uh, I've talked to. You that. know, they was on the. They was in England or somewhere. So you know, we didn't. We didn't have no concept of they even exist. You know. Oh, okay. I think they came from overseas or somewhere. They were. They weren't in America. I can tell you right. that. Yeah, they were in America. <laughs> Because we we were sort of, I mean, nothing personal, but we wouldn't have picked their name. You know what I'm saying? So that, that name was derived <laughs> independently. That name was derived independently of the band. Yes, because we were seven black guys that rode on Sundays. Right. And, that's you know, that's, you know that's where the name came from. That's where we, you know... With seven of us that rode on Sundays. How's uh, how's protocol changed over the years? As you've seen it, yeah, you know, by back in then, you know, it's it more like a dictatorship. You know, it was a lot, a lot of Hitlerism. Okay, you know, nowadays, you know, it's you got a board that. You know, that makes help makes the decision instead of the one person make a decision, which is a better thing because you make a decision as a team, not as just what he said or you know what I'm saying. And then you know you feel better. I mean, we made the decision as a group, so you know if it's right or wrong, we made the decision. You know, as a group. So now what we do to fix it? If it's wrong, you know what I mean. Right. That's what I like about it now. Not so much one sided. I, I used to hate to have to be the one to make the damn, the, you know, the cutthroat decision. You know, it's always he said. He said, well, as a unit, the unit said. It's a we situation, not an I. Now, Black Dragon says that a lot. Is that something we got from you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might have to admit. He used he used to go with that I I so I say, he says, son you can't do that it's not just you you don't it's it's a we as an organization it's not just what the president say you know he does what's best for the group the group makes a decision and his job is to to carry through what the decision was. But now, you know, as collectively as a group, when the group makes a decision, decision has been made, you know. Like I said, be it right or wrong, the group made the decision. So hopefully it'll be right. More likely it will if you, if, if they're taking consideration uh, the wisdom that they that they have at their at their hands, you know, because you know, some these youngsters man, they they, 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 they want to think they know everything, but they really don't. Right, you know they, they. It's to me is. I mean, you know, I know they're excited because I can remember when I was their age and how excited I was, and I didn't want the 
like the older clubs, they, you know, they, like I said, the Cobras, you know, they used to tell you, well, yeah, y'all need to slow down, man. Don't, don't, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry, you know. She was, ah, oh, we can do it this way. Do this. Hold up, man. Listen, I mean, we made a lot of bad choices coming up. Okay. I mean, you know, we made a lot of good ones too, but, you know, it could have been a lot easier if we, if we had it just listened. You know what I'm saying? Somebody was, but then back then, wasn't nobody trying to help you survive. You know, it was every man for himself. You know, but nowadays is, you know, there's, there's group therapy, as they say, you know, they come together to form the, the coalitions and the, whatever, the councils, you know, to help one another. You know, which is good, you know. You need that. I, I still believe that you can't have too many bike clubs, man. You don't want to be limited like the like the dinosaurs or the cowboys. Neither one of them are around today in today's life, you know. It just they went extinct. And if you if start limiting clubs, if anything happened to the few that you have, you know what I'm saying, then they, they're wiped out. You know, you got to start all over again. You can't have too many. You, to me, you can't have too many. It shouldn't well, be the location. Uh, you guys came up in the AMF days. Um, can you describe your first bike? My very first bike was like a 305 Scrambler. That's what we learned to ride on. You know, I was the first one to get one, you know, and they found out that I, I was practicing riding and, you know, and they, they snuck over to my house and caught me practicing, you know. Next thing I know, it was like <laughs> about eight of the five, the six of them who started coming. We started meeting at my house and were practicing riding, taking turns, going down the street and coming back, busting gears, you know, the 305 scramblers next. You know, you guys started that was my off. very first bike. You guys started off with sport bikes. Sport well, bike no, we started out with choppers, man. My my after that three hundred five Scrambler, I had a a five hundred Triumph, a five fifty Triumph, chopped. Mm -hmm. You know, with the, with the six band pullback, sleeping bag, and all of that. Right. You know that was the style, man. Just being pulled back with with the king queen seat. Oh yeah, you got pictures of it? No, you know what? If if, if I did, it would have been them old Polaroids. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying back then. Oh, back then we had that yeah. old Polaroids. You know what I'm talking about? The one that take the picture. Yeah. But by now it would be it would be turquoise. Okay, <laughs> if it if it lived, lasted that long. But no, I didn't have after the after that bike. You know that bike would never, it would never take me anywhere. You know, every time I got ready to go somewhere, man, the sun gun would break down, and I got tired of that. So after that bike, let me see what did I get? I got a seven fifty Honda, seven fifty Honda. Damn, yeah, chopped it down, extended front end. Uh, you know, six bins, pullbacks, king queen seats. Now that's the picture that you see from the mother chapter of this guy sitting out in front of the, the clubhouse on a on a bike. On, and that was my bike. I had just got it out the paint shop. I had just got there, and he he ran out there and jumped on it. And somebody took the picture. You know, but I see right. now. I didn't know that that picture existed. You know, until you know it came later on in the year, and you know, and, and all of a sudden one day I looked at the bike. And I said, "That's my damn bike! I had just got the damn thing out the paint shop." You know what I'm saying? Because it had yeah. been in the paint shop. Because we was into the real choppers. We thought, you know, then you know, one of my friends, one of my club members, he had like a what a 750 uh, soft tail. You know, that's when they had that soft tail frame. Mm -hmm. He called it the Scorpio bikes. I don't know where all of those old pictures are. We had them once upon a time. You know, a lot of we lost a lot of a lot of memorabilia stuff. 
So um, the first introduction I personally have ever had to Black Sabbath was Biker Boys. You guys, Patch was featured in there. And that movie starts off with a death. Um, is there anybody that you miss? That, uh, any stories or anything you want to share with that? Oh man, I got I got just too many of them, man. I mean, oh man, I miss them all. You know, yeah. but the the one that the one that was really the 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 worst. No, I can't say no death is is better than any, any other. It was our first one, our first, but we wasn't even our club was barely a year old. We weren't even a year old. We just moved to entire place. Mm -hmm. And probably hadn't been there half a year, and we had a party. And you know, we used to always had this rule, you know, where if you get drunk, your keys go behind the bar, and, right? And, and your keys would stay behind the bar, you know. But we had one club member that snuck behind the bar and got his keys, and he went out in front of the club, and going back up and up and forth, uh, back and forth, up and down the street. You know, probably 110, 115 miles an hour, you know, regular streets. Well, the, the, you know, we tried to catch him, you know, but he jumped on his bike and took off, you know. Right. The only thing we could do is try to flag him down because he was coming back and forth down the street. And that last time, man, he ran into the back of a park, got parked car, man, and just embedded himself into the car. Man, you know, like, and this was what wasn't even a half a block from the clubhouse. You know, no skid mark, no nothing, just straight up embedded. Okay, right. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was just horrific, man. You know, and then you got to go tell his wife. Yeah, yeah. it's never fun. You know, it, it always sticks in your head, I. Eh? Yeah, I know personally. I knew somebody who hit a deer, and and uh, it was pretty. That was a pretty good mess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyhow, you know, it was. It, it's, it's been so many that come and go. And like he was like the first, and then we even had three or four in the same area. You know, I lost one of my one of my. One of the younger guys that I was so-called bringing him up, teaching him to rope, and you know he was when I got the ZX11. Yeah. You know, and I said, yeah, Blue Knight. Yes, I remember. Yeah, I said, man, this bike, man. You know, there's no bike like this bike, man. Oh, Pep, I got it, I got it. And I would tell him, man, this is is something about this bike, this. That you don't know nothing about, man. Of course, I had been into bike building before, you know, but I, I couldn't have built nothing that, that was maybe that fast, but couldn't last that long. You know what I mean? You could just, yeah, bike was just for its time. It was just, just too, it was known as, the, it was the number one killer at that time. You know, the bike was just off the hook. Anyhow, he come by my house, man. I said, man, come out and see what I just got. I said, oh, man, no, you didn't, man. I had let him roll mine probably the day before, and he went out and got one. Mm. And I said, man, please, man, wait. Before you start doing anything, learn this bike, man. This thing is, it just would just lift. I mean, it just would lift. Right. And, you know, we were all at the clubhouse. It was a raining day, you know. Everybody got off from work. We stopped by the clubhouse and said, we was going to go down to the to the Brothers of the Sun. They was going to have a grand opening that, and they were going down to celebrate with them early. So we all decided we were going to drive down there. Well, Blue Knight went, back, went home and got his bike, man. I said, man, why'd you go home and get that damn bike, man? You know it's wet. Ah oh, man, next thing I know, he didn't make it. Just got lost control of it. 
went airborne. Okay. All right. But you know, I don't I don't like the double stories. So it's, it's the good times. You know. Luckily well, the guys now they I think they're they riding safer now or something, but you know. Right. Uh, thank goodness well, for that, you know. You mentioned it several times there. Why don't you uh tell us about your, your, your first clubhouse and how that all went down. Oh man, the first it was the only clubhouse to me. <laughs> 4280 Market Street. Oh man, we had got to, you know, what had happened was, you know, as we had, well, it's growing, you know, we had probably got up to like 10, 15 of us. And we would meet, would meet at each other's houses, you know, in the garage and shit, man, you know, and hanging out and hollering and screaming and shit. So the wives said, you niggas, you motherfuckers got to go. And we said, uh, Oh man, we need to find our own place to hang out where we can't be told what to do. <laughs> and so we put it on the mission to somebody go find us a clubhouse. And next thing you know, we found the clubhouse and the the landlord Lord was super nice. She was off the hook. She was glad to see us and we were glad to see her. You know, she had a beauty shop next door and we had the bike club next door. To her beauty shop, you know, she was mm-hmm. gone by five o'clock in the evening, and we usually came in about five o'clock in the evening. <laughs> so, you know, it was like the building was always active, you know, from, you know, there was no dead time because all of the club members had keys. You know, you can come and go in as you please. Right. You know. So, so that was, that was back in the day, you know. You know, everybody had a key. Yeah, you know, that way it got to the point where, you know, guys that <laughs> they got put out the house or whatever, they had to stay there. And uh yeah, I was one of them too, got put out. They had to stay there. <coughs> so, you know, it was all in growing pains, you know, it was a lot of ups and downs during that time. So when you first started up and you got your patch design, um, did you go to one person? Ben Ben? And shit. Oh, man. You know, know, to get the design and to get somebody to produce what you design is, you know, that's like like pulling hen's teeth or something, you know. You, you can come up with the design, but you know, back then they didn't have a whole bunch of people that could even do the, uh, the monograms and all of that kind of stuff. I can't remember where did we find these people that did the first pattern. Where did we find those people? I think what we did, we had a monogram or something. It was a whole bunch of stages we had to go through. Mm-hmm. It wasn't easy, an easy task. It wasn't back then. I think what we might have did was might have found out where the Cobras had theirs done at, or something. Mm-hmm. And then from that from that point, we we went to uh, to their patch maker or something like that. That's what I want to say. I can't remember exactly how we did that first patch. Anyhow, it took us a long time. You know, of course, it took us two years just even before we could even get recognition, you know. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> Do you still have your first patch? No, because it was one of them Levi's, you know, with the... Uh, you know, just a regular Levi jacket with the you know, cut the arm sleeves off about halfway and then roll it up. Man, it turns the real fast. <laughs> you know, Levi, that's why we went to leather jacket because I got still got one, but it's not my original. I, I didn't hardly keep any of my original stuff, man. And I really dread that. If you guys ever start something, really keep your beginning stuff. Because later on in life, you're going to wish you had it. 
Cause I got, I got, I had so much stuff that that I don't even know what ever else happened to it. Right. But it's, it would be treasurable for right now because it would bring back memories of how I got it. Cause I, you know, I got pictures around and I can go and stand at them and remember when that was and what we were doing at a particular time. And, you know, maybe not what year, but, but it was good or bad times, but it was mostly good times. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean that. There's a story behind each patch, so yeah, you want oh, yeah. to keep that. So okay. uh, not only patches, but every everything that you start out with. It, you know, like even our first flyer for our first dance. You know, I found what a ticket for our for our eighth annual dance, and I think the ticket was. Two dollars and fifty cents or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So it was a lot of trial and error in the beginning for you guys. Oh yeah, man. We didn't have nobody to coach us. You know what I'm saying? Right. You think it was better that way? Well, in the beginning, it, it, it you know we could have like like now if. You know, I can understand maybe what they were trying to do to us, but it's kind of like what I want to try to do to the guys now. Let them know that, hey, you ain't got to go to the left if you go to the right or where there's a side door. You know, you ain't got to go all the way through that way. That's what I would like to do. To, you know, just to just pass off all of the knowledge that I – that I have acquired over the 40 some odd years that, that I've been doing this, you know, it's for life for me. I mean, you know, to have to do without it, you get withdrawal system system. I mean, you know, it's like, wow. To do without is like, like, I'm just like not having a bike. Okay. And if you ever been, if you were a biker and you never had a stage where you didn't have a bike, you know how miserable that was. Oh, yeah. I think a friend of mine said one time <clears throat> they just their biggest fear was missing out. Yeah. <laughs> That's the biggest fear. You're scared you're going to miss something. Oh, yeah. They're just every opportunity to get out and see the brothers and get out and do something and yeah, yeah they, they want to be there. They want to be part of it. Yeah, it. it and, it's, and it's understandable. You know, it's quite understandable. Like I said, I, I used to dread just, just, just to have to go home. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's how it's all forged. To get out. Yeah. That's that's one of the things that I, uh, I think I personally, when I when I listen to people talk about, well, how do I do this or how do I do that. A lot of this stuff you pick up when you go out. And if you're not going out, I'm not sure what you're doing. Yeah. Well, hey, well, you know, it was one thing about the club. I said, I thought the old lady knew it. If ever she, she needed, she all you had to do was call down there. If I was mm -hmm. going anywhere, it wasn't like I went to a whole bunch of places. <laughs> <laughs> every free moment that you had you was at the hole you know what I'm saying I do I but do. you know like when you got a when you got a clubhouse you know everything is is different than when you don't have one you know you know to to have a clubhouse and to be able to run also is the ultimate but if you got a clubhouse and your membership is down and Membership is few, and you have to keep the, the bills going and stuff. You don't get to do all of that riding right. and stuff, okay? Right. And you need to pay some gas and light and stuff. And that's kind of like what happened in our life, you know. When the membership was, was big, you know, we had 25, 30 members. We could go anywhere. We could even afford to close down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then your, your membership drop or you, you get a spell where you lose four or five members and now you're down to a skeleton crew you know, and, and, and you ain't been recruiting. Your people wasn't recruiting, which is very critical. You got to recruit. 
I was actually uh, talking with Dragon a while back <clears throat> about that very subject and uh, and uh, just how you kind of go about it and approach it because you know I think one of the biggest issues a lot of clubs run into, especially when they're duplicating something that another club's done, is they're competing for the same pool of people. Mm-hmm. So you know you got you got a dominant in an area that says. Well, why the hell should they go to you? All right. Well, why not us? Why should we be competing with you? So that's that's one of the big challenges, and and uh, you know, I mean, how do you, how do you approach that? Oh, that's a goodie there. <laughs> that's a goodie there. You know, like I said, when we started up, there wasn't no problem. There were no problems. <laughs> okay. Right. We we loved everybody that loved us, you know. Mm-hmm. And every like I said, uh, and wherever we went, you know, we we brought good goodwill and and laughter, you know. Everybody everywhere we went, they were stale until we got there, you know. And then once once the we friendly up with everybody, you know, like hey man, we we come here to party, y'all on party. <laughs> And, you know, leave your drama at, at your house or where you go, wherever you left it. This is right. a party situation, you know. Well, the world's yeah. gotten a little bit, a bit smaller these days. Well, see, that's what I'm talking about. You know, we shouldn't be down to just, what, a 99% or 1%. Why can't be just some other people out there? You know what I'm saying? Why you got to be one or two? Why can't it be three, four, five, six? Okay. It shouldn't be just two. Two, two things you could get into just because you ride. I think I think uh, you got to be who you are. Yeah. So you got to be true to yourself. That's true. But you know, like I said, to each his own. This 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 was my life that I chose. You know. For those of you and, who are... uh, I, I I can't do without it. You know, I I I love to smell it. Funny gas and tires burning. The world's a better place with it. For those of you who are just tuning in, we are interviewing the father of the Black Sabbath Nation, Paul Pep Perry. We call him Pep or Father. And uh, he's been in the club since the very beginning. He's the first one to have a motorcycle. He helped teach the other brothers of the original seven how to ride. And uh, we are just all so blessed to have him still alive and in the club. I'm testing out my new software for Black Dragon Biker TV, Black Dragon Biker News Network, Biker News You Can Trust, The Dragon's Lair, Motorcycle Chaos, and our online magazine, BikerLiberty.com. Here you can get us on Black Dragon Biker TV on YouTube, Black Dragon Biker here on uh Facebook and Black Dragon Biker TV on Instagram TV. So we just thought we would pick a time here late at night to test out uh, this new software. And so, you know, please leave comments and let us know uh, how the software is working. We would definitely appreciate that. Um, This right here is uh, a video. I'm a little bit upset because I can't seem to make the sound work. And I guess you guys don't hear the sound, so we'll figure that out. But um, this, uh, we're just testing all the pieces of our software. Um, this is one of our uh, truck, one of our beloved viewers that's uh, sent this in. So this will, you guys are getting to preview that, and then he's going to say, "I watch Black like Dragon Biker TV," like and it was so cool. And uh, I didn't get a chance that we can't hear it. And when you hear those new trucks hitting that pole, ting, 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 then the wind blows in. So uh, <laughs> I got to figure out how to make the sound happen. So uh, we just picked the late night time to to, uh, to play with the software, figure out how it works, and give you guys that are watching the treat of... Uh, us interviewing the father of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. On the microphone with me, I have two of the contributors 
uh, to my Facebook page and also to my YouTube page and to uh, uh, BikerLiberty.com, which is our online magazine. Um, and I have uh, Biker Trash here, and I also have Merlin, uh, who's also the executive producer. So, uh, you know, it's really cool. We got uh, uh, a lot of things happening here. Did, did the live video just go blank? So anyway, we'll uh, go back to the father, and uh, we'll go back to uh, the interviewing uh, right now. So we're back to the father, Paul Pet Perry, and uh, we thank you for tuning in. If you have questions or something like that, please type them in, and uh, we will um, definitely love to, uh, to, to answer some of them. So, guys, back to the interview. <laughs> I, I can't say that I'm not. Sorry. I can't say that I'm not. Oh God, <laughs> killing me. <laughs> uh, I am a little curious. Is there any questions so far from the uh, live feed uh, from the Facebook? Uh, Uh, no, there's somebody saying I see your I hear the vid and your commentary at the same time. Oh, somebody heard yeah, the could, video. Could you hear the video? I, I could barely I could barely hear the uh, ting ting from the, you know, from the chucks hitting the pole. I couldn't hear who who it was that was talking. So you heard the oh wow! So they could hear barely, the video. Barely. I can't hear the video. So let me see. Let's try it again then. Uh that's interesting. So I should be able to turn that source up. Let's see. Oh, on my, on there. It sounds good, boss. Is it lo- is it louder now? Oh, people are. Uh, I, is it loud? Can you hear it now? Oh, you guys are about thirty seconds behind me. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Has anybody seen the video yet? We also got Tia on the phone. I forgot to mention Tia. Tia, are you still Hi. on the phone? My name is Black Dragon, Midnight Ghost Rider. I'm from Charleston. Yes, sir, I'm here. And I watch oh, wow. Black Dragon bike the TV. So we can hear the ting, 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 tings, but we can't hear the talking. Oh, man, that really sucks. <laughs> Oh, okay, so, you know, we're testing things out. But anyway, if you guys want to send a video that says, I watch Black Dragon Biker TV, and I think you can twirl the nunchucks as good as I can, which, which you can't, uh, and no one can. So, uh, but anyway, we want you guys to uh, send your videos. And he goes right here. I, he, he, he gives his name. He says, I watch Black Dragon Biker TV. Then the wind starts blowing. Which is like totally badass right here. And then he walks off with the wind, the leaves blowing. I mean, this is a Chuck Norris film, and we can't even hear it. I'm so mad. But anyway, uh, we're learning our software here on the on the go as we go. And so now, <coughs> now back to the father uh, in the interview with the father, uh, Paul Pet Perry. So, Mr. Perry, I, <clears throat> are there any are there any uh, good stories you want to share about uh, Mr. Black Dragon? <laughs> oh hell no! <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I was, I was going to ask you. You knew I was going there. I'm about I to say which fucking one. <laughs> I'm about to say which which fucking one. <laughs> I knew I was going to go there. <laughs> uh, why he why he prospected for four and a half years? Hey, because he was so damn hard-headed. Oh, I just I just want something funny we can all get a chuckle out of. 
<laughs> he would just so he would he he would he okay, didn't so he, I'm he, sorry he, to say that uh, we <laughs> cut this show off here. <laughs> I'm sorry to say we're cutting the show off now. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, you, you know, Black Dragons is his own worst critic, so I, I don't think uh, uh, he he's always put himself out there. I don't think that'll be a problem. Mm. No, go ahead, guys. Do it. Go ahead. Just, you know, throw me under the bus here. <laughs> what do you mean? You're not in the under the quick bus. You you the driver. <laughs> okay, other bus. So how can you be under? it? Okay, okay, right. father. Okay. Hey, you know you was hard headed. I remember a conversation we had when uh you were teaching me the we and I was uh pretty upset uh i didn't feel like i was getting the love i was supposed to be getting or whatever the recognition or whatever and uh i i was uh, kind of moaning and groaning and uh i had been prospecting a long time <laughs> and i was i was saying i've done this and i've done that and i'm you know i'm not being in the father kept saying there you go i i i Mine, 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 me, me, me. Yeah, because I did that. Stop saying I. But I'm the one. Stop saying I. But you don't understand. I'm talking about me. Stop saying me. And this went on for about, I was so effing pissed off. (laughs) And he kept saying, it's not about I. Stop saying I, 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 mine, 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 me, 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 and start saying we. And he drilled this in my head over a period of, of, uh, you know, years, <laughs> a decade maybe, before one day it just finally clicked. So um, I'm not supposed to be telling a story about me. He is, but I just wanted to say that uh, it was, you know, I I was fortunate to find guidance and leadership in my life. As a young man who grew up without a father, I was just, I hit the Navy, I was wild and, um and probably untamable, and uh, it, that's uh, the Black Sabbath probably saved me in many respects. Oh, now you're passing your knowledge on that he taught you. Yeah, and I'm really surprised because I, I didn't never thought he was listening. I thought I was just 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 preaching and preaching because he, he'd always do opposite. If, if I say go left, he gonna go right. <laughs> That's our reverse psychology. <laughs> and then I had to start using reverse on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're gonna go right, so I might have to <laughs> be over there to the right side to show you that I already knew what you was gonna do. Well, that's that's kind of how it all goes. You get to a point where you really do know what the other person's thinking. Yeah. And and like I said, it goes back to, you know, from being a dictatorship to, to, you know, a team leadership. You know, I feel better with a team than just that I make a damn decision all alone. That's it. Three, four years has always been better than one. Especially thinking about something. So when did you guys uh, first move out of state? Let me see. I, oh, uh, it was probably, oh, my goodness. I don't even know what year that was. We the Wichita. We went to Wichita. Wichita was our first chapter, I think. Uh, yeah, Wichita was our first out of the state chapter. I don't even know what year it was, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. <clears throat> okay. I, I, I got burnout on numbers, okay? Oh, that's all right. I don't know what year it was, but it's Wichita was, was our first 
1989. And what's, 1989. Uh, okay. 89, yeah. It was a good year. And what uh, challenges was did that present? Hey, we, we got our first question in, I think, uh, and the question is, how many of the original seven are still around by uh, Jim uh, Schuler looks like? How many of the Two. original seven are still around? Well, there's only one uh, left in the club. Uh, there are three that are left alive. I still ain't figured out who the third one is. I know Stretch is there, but I don't know who, who you're talking about the third one. I can't remember his name uh, now that you just asked me, but he's living in, like, Mississippi. I, I actually called him and talked to him a couple of years ago. Uh, maybe like four years ago, uh, I called him and talked to him. So he, uh, let's hope he's still around. So yeah. there, there's three that I know of uh, uh, that are still even alive. Uh, Stretch, who was one of the original seven, who's still in San Diego. Then, No, uh, Stretch is in, uh, he's in Carolina somewhere. Oh, uh, the last time I saw him was in San no, Diego. He's, 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 in, he's in Buford. Uh, Georgia, he's down in Georgia somewhere. Oh wow! Cause last time I was there, I tried to he tried to come hook up with me. And then uh, uh, there's another guy that I think is in Mississippi or something, one of those places, and I I can't recall his name. And then there's the father, and that's all that are left of the original seven. Does that you are you ever lonely? Do you ever like miss those guys? Oh yeah, yeah. You know that was that was those were they they were the original. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, you miss them. Yeah, yeah, you do. So the uh, over the years the. Uh... I'm sure there's lots of people that have come and gone, and and uh, a lot of the, cha- the challenges, I'm sure, are, are very similar over the years, and one of them is uh, relationships. So I know you said you were divorced at one point. Um, is there anything you want to talk about on that on that note? <laughs> you don't have to. I just no, out. man, we we don't elaborate on that. Hey, keep your ass at home. That's my advice. <laughs> I just, I just think, I, in my mind, when I ask this question, I'm thinking more in terms of somebody who's new to the set, looking to come in. What would you give them as far as advice from your your past experiences? Hey, don't don't let that biker shit go to your head. Okay. Don't forget where you what you what you really came into life for, you know. So, so I had a lot of guys that went to lunch and never came back because they found the bike club. But then they was wild anyway. They just found a way to escape, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a common theme is uh, finding balance in your life. Uh, not being consumed. Yeah. Trust me, it'll, it'll gobble you up. <laughs> it spit you out. Oh, yeah. Or say shit you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why can't I say that? Oh, you just did, so. Sure. Yo, well, okay, I didn't mean that. But uh, anyhow, yeah, it will. We're, we're- we're late night, so we should be fine. All the kitties should be in bed sleeping, and all the adults should be on. Okay. I, I don't mean to be out, outrageous, but I'm just trying to call it, tell, you, tell you a little true facts. Mm-hmm. To the best of my ability. We have a uh, question from John Ojeda, who is uh, nope. one of our top fans out of uh, Texas, around the Houston area. Uh, he's okay. been watching the show and uh, for a long time, especially uh, the uh, uh, YouTube channel. But anyway, he asked you, Father, um, did you ever think Black Sabbath would uh, grow to what it has become today? 
I always wish that it would. I, I, you know, it, it, if it had to been for John, it, it wouldn't be as big as it is, okay? Because he was listening to me preaching, you know. Hey, and he took he took everything that, that, I, that I taught him, and and he put it to to work. So uh, and it works. So uh, I I don't you know I don't know that um, I don't know that he uh, knew that it would be as big as it is, but but he definitely uh, uh, planned it. He planned it. Um, we would talk about it in the club all the time. He would tell me what kind of motorcycle club he wanted and what kind of motorcycle club he dreamed about. And he would, we would, uh, and this, he talks about uh, uh, being kicked out of, of the house. This was a particular time when uh, he got kicked out of his house uh, by his wife and I got kicked out of my house uh, by my significant other. And we both were in the clubhouse for well, uh, a few months. Uh, uh, you know, we'd go home to shower or whatever, but we spent many nights in the clubhouse laying on the floor, <laughs> sleep. And uh, um, we, it'd be the clubhouse would be dark, and we'd be in there laying down, and we'd be talking, and we would talk about all sorts of things and he would tell me his dreams and plans for the motorcycle club and how he wanted it to be a motorcycle club that would was spread all across the world and that would would be from coast to coast and um how the riders would be known for riding and we you know we would be a breed apart he he told me all of these stories and 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 so when I got an opportunity in uh, about 2008 2009 uh, I actually started to put into motion. Now, a lot of people ask me about the Black Sabbath, and the funny thing for me is, uh, this was never <coughs> this was never my dream. Uh, this was always me reaching out to accomplish his dream, and uh, it, uh, it it's amazing to to understand that when somebody plants seeds in a young person's mind. Uh, what those people can become. And what's crazy about that for me is uh, I get to do that same sort of thing now for uh, folks all over the world. Uh, So many emails and letters I get uh, telling people what changes I've helped them to make. And they've never even met me because, you know, we got this thing like the internet, like you didn't have before. And, um, it, it's kind of cool to be able to have done, uh, to be able to do what what he did, uh, in a different kind of way. So, uh, John, we I don't think we ever thought it would be this big, uh, and I don't think we ever thought it would continue to grow, but it is something that he he definitely planned for. There were things that we couldn't know, like. Um, in San Diego, we were uh, we were a, a big and an established club, and getting out across the country and establishing like um, you know we didn't know about uh, especially when you got back east, all of the outlaw clubs and one percent clubs and getting blessings and and uh, all of these things that happened, we had no idea about these things, uh, and and uh, uh, setting up clubs in different uh, areas and support patches and all the stuff. Uh, we were like babies, babies in the water. Um, and, and we learned a lot of lessons, uh, the very hard way. And we're still learning lessons, uh, the very hard way. So I, I think putting together a motorcycle club and making it last, uh, is one of the most difficult things you'll do and not get paid for in your life. This actually kind of uh, sparked a question in my mind. Just, uh, Mr. Perry, what would be what would be your your biggest uh, aha moment? The thing you wish you knew that you know now, but you wish you knew at the time. I I think what I, I would 
if I would have had more participation in people that wanted more out of life than just riding. You know what I'm saying? Because riding is cool, but you got to get, you got to put the kickstand down sooner or later, okay? <laughs> you can't always right. keep, keep the kickstand up, okay? To have somewhere to go to after all these years of, you know, they say, hey, this, this is what we did this for. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like a clubhouse or a compound or something like that. That's, that would be the ultimate to have our own compound, you know, where we don't have to go to nobody's house but ours, but our own. And then we just invite everybody to our house. Did I get off of the subject somewhere? <laughs> I might have been well, drifting, man. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I, I, I guess, I guess kind of what I'm getting at is, is you know, with, with, with how you did come up, you know, learning as you go, is there anything you wish you'd known rather than finding it out the hard way? Just, just like you're looking back on it and saying, gosh, I wish I knew this. Or I wish I'd considered this or thought about this. Well, even if I had, I wouldn't have the same team. So, you know what I mean? All of the people that, uh, that I, I, I've lost almost everybody except Dragon, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, as far as, as, as accomplishing things, you know, the rest of the guys, you know, the younger guys, they're okay, but they, they, they just need a little bit more guidance, you know? Mm-hmm. Am I getting off of this subject? Uh, maybe I done lost where you were where you asking me. Did I lose it again? Well, <clears throat> I, I like your answer anyway. Um, I, I guess I guess I was thinking more in terms, you know, you got lots of people who go to Dragon for starting new clubs and stuff. Right. And and one of the themes that Dragon has in a lot of his commentary and shows and and whatnot is, is he's trying to help people not make the same mistakes he made. And you know, we hear from Dragon all the time on on things and he's always bringing up subjects but you know as being the person who taught dragon a lot of what he knows and been with him through the trenches i was i was wanting to know if there was anything that you wish you'd known that would have saved you a lot of heartache um if you'd known it earlier on <laughs> <laughs> yeah when we did the boat biker boy movie Okay, I, if I'd have known it was going to be like that, we'd have, we'd have had a second episode and everything. But uh, there was some difficulties in, in my young my young members. They they ran off just they needed some time off, and if I had it to do all over again. I I think he would see what exactly what I was trying to trying to show him. But you know, like. Hey, we got to do what we did, so I'm grateful for that. Because my thing was, we could at least make, we would always make the Turner Classic. That was what, I, what, what the dream was, you know. They can, they will always be on the Turner Classics, one way or another, okay? Mm-hmm. In that movie, you know. So, you know, we, uh, if I had it to do all over again, like I said, we, we would have had a second episode, we, we probably be doing be like Star Wars or something, you know, Biker Boy Three or you know, we mm-hmm. all off on, on on hover bikes or something, you know. So was there which resistance I did see, to which that I did see a video on a hover bike? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. What'd you say? Go ahead, Go ahead Merlin. Oh, I was gonna say I just I just actually watched a video on a hover bike. <laughs> yeah, hey, did you see that too? <laughs> yeah. So was there was there resistance to the to making this movie or participating? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, like I I just couldn't I couldn't get couldn't get my director to to stay focused. <laughs> but you know, it was a, it was all good. We got to accomplish what we did, what we came there for. You know. But uh, my thing was, 
we we, we would have got to go back, you know. I I, I believe, you know. But now we got to we got to wait. Now we got a little bit, bit of difficulty. Hopefully, we'll get back there, get back to Hollywood, and get back on that payroll, man. Because it sure was nice just hanging out, just doing what what bikers do, just hang out and wipe on your bike and and get paid. <laughs> okay. Just for hanging out and and, and talking bike talk, you know that yes. was a, that was a, that was an unbelievable payroll, man. Just to do stuff that you normally do, but to get paid, you and your bike, mm-hmm. you know that's 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 kind of unbelievable. It yeah. was, you know, you could eat all of the food you want. You know, they had chefs and. Catered everything, thing man. It was like wow, un freaking believable. That was the that was the best adventure I had ever been on. Okay, right. I mean, you know, to get paid for what you do, and this all you know, it, it was like going to somebody's annual. Okay, but it was every night. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, yeah, that'd be freaking. That'd be awesome. And getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> you and your bike, okay? Now, what could be better than that? So, what kind of what kind of biker movies do you think uh, you'd like to see that haven't been made? Well, you know, it's 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 it's, it's about time for them to start to do like a boy's second half, you know, and I they didn't went to whole Harley's now. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They went to the baggers. Mm-hmm. Well, not all of them, but, you know, m- the mass majority. The electric all bikes. Them. Huh? The electric bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Will that be part no, of no, no. Oh, okay. yeah, That'd be part three. Wait, wait we, need, we need the bagger scene first. I mean, okay. yeah. We just right. uh, we just got a question in. Uh, Drew Black says uh, to Pep, uh, Father, uh, of all the offices you've held, which was your favorite role, and which did you uh, dislike the most? So, of all the officer positions you've had in the club, which one did you like the best, and which one did you hate the most? My best one, I think, was road captain, man. I used to just love to be the road captain, man. To get to bust them gears. Me and my assistant, man, we had a we had a thing, you know. We had our own signals, you know. And for me to be the captain, and to, to get to drop back behind the the end of the pack that was probably two miles long, and then come back up around them, bust them gears, man. Let me tell you, that was like going. That was like going home, man. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, that was so much fun. I get chills on my arm thinking about that shit. Just busting gears to drop back behind the pack to the last vehicle. Make sure you still got your, everybody there, the trailing cars, the trailers, everything. Then I have to come back around and go back around your group. And send the assistant over to the right to let the group go back past and the road captain take back over. Oh man, that was like sweet. And mercy. What's the that worst was, weather you, what's the worst weather you've been through? Worst weather? Oh, one year and let me tell you, we went through we went through a sandstorm. It started out, we was coming from Salton Sea. There's a sandstorm at the in at the bottom in the desert. Okay, the sand was blowing so bad you couldn't even see the lines on the on the highway. So you just have to imaginize where it was, and it was gusting so hard that you had to ride side saddle. Okay, at eighty miles an hour because you didn't have no traction, because the wind was gusting, crosswind was gusting. Mm-hmm. Then when we got through that, we saw clouds as we was going up the mountain. Well, when we started, it was raining. It started raining. Started raining, 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 and then the higher we got, then it started snowing. Next thing you know is a complete whiteout. Okay. I started with about twenty guys. Man, all the trucks and trailers were full of bikes and shit because everybody was broke down, man. The snow was so deep. 
only way you can get through was like from the semis, you know, with the two tires on right. the semi on the back. You had mm-hmm. to stay in one of the tri- tire tracks, one or the other. You couldn't do both. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, the ice was, was stacked up. I mean, you know, you know, you, you couldn't cross between the ice, between the two tires, because it's froze mm-hmm. like. So you had the track behind the truck. Man, let me tell you, man, that was, that was, uh, we probably almost lost the whole pack. Maybe five bikes might have made it out of about 25. You know, it was so cold, man. My bike just stopped. My two outer cylinders just stopped firing. Okay. And the only thing I had was the two inner cylinders firing. And, you know, it was in the situation where, man, if you stop, it's over, man. Because, you know, that particular year, they had a lot of people that died, you know. You know, they mm-hmm. stopped. Uh, and, you know, and, Ain't no rescue, you know what I mean. Right. Not to the snow, not to the snow melt. And then she, I said, hey, you know, and the bad part about it, man, my club member had one of them peanut tanks. Oh shit! Sure. Okay, man, yeah, he 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 hollered, pimp, pimp, I need gas, man. And I'm scared to look back at it, man. No, don't look. We'll stop when if you run out. But right now, I ain't looking at you. Okay, <laughs> I'm pretending I don't even hear your ass. Just stay in line, man. Every single file for about, oh, man, that probably was about 20 or 30 miles, man. And, man, all of a sudden the snow stopped and then it started raining again because we was going down the elevation. But now, man, we so cold, man. You know, we cold, wet, and tired, okay? So we pulled right. into this gas station, man. I mean, you know... My hands were so cold, man, I couldn't even stop my bike. I hit the damn pump. Okay, stop me. Bam! You know what I'm saying? We running there and take the service station over, man. We dripping wet, shaking, the heebie-jeebies, every goddamn thing, you know. Took us about two hours, you know, before we could, you know, you could actually feel your hands and your and your feet. Of course, we were still wet, but, you know. Right. Before your feelings come back into your hands and, and your feet. I've been there. Yeah. But uh, that was my road captain story. I love to be in the road captain, man. Now, the position that I really, really didn't really, really, really like, but it was a national president, man. I hated making all them goddamn decisions, man. It was like, goddamn. It really was a lot of pressure, okay? People be right. thinking thinking that shit is easy. It ain't easy, man. You got problems all the damn time. If you don't, somebody else do. So you got it. Right. That's what I think. Okay, I love being a real cap, but I didn't like necessarily being a national president. I mean, it's, it's okay, but, you know, officership never did really mean a whole bunch to me. You know, I I would be from, I could be just a regular member and just get just as much pleasure, you know. No, you're there to serve your brothers. That's right. Whatever they needed to do, I was willing to do. And if I I had to step up to be the national and I had to, whatever it takes. I'm going to probably uh, say, Say again, Dragon. I'm uh, showing a picture right now of uh, Pep uh, talking to me uh, when I first made national, and uh, I brought the boys into um, uh, uh, San Diego. We rode all the way across the country on the cold ash run in the middle of the winter. And uh, if you look at the bike next to mine to the right, I don't have a good picture of it, but that's Pep's motorcycle. Now, Pep, how old are you, like 70 or something, something like that? Uh, 71. 71 years old, and he still rides a Hayabusa. <laughs> and, oh, wow. And you're looking, uh, you can see it's a metal, fl- it's a gold flake, uh, which is the Black Sabbath motorcycle colors. At one time, all of our motorcycles in the whole club were all yellow. 
So uh, all old school Black Sabbath still ride yellow bikes. It's it's crazy. I'm I'm gonna paint mine yellow. So, um, but if you ever see uh, you you'll know that you're dealing with a old school Black Sabbath or someone that wants to be old school. If you see them on a yellow bike, uh, and that's the that. Uh, but the old the old school the old guard all those guys still have yellow bikes. That's cool. Yeah, that was the trip when we got the whole club to paint the all. Everybody agreed. You could, could could you imagine? Could you imagine? You couldn't imagine your whole club say, "Yeah, man, let's do this." Okay, you couldn't have fantasized that. We we only had one guy that didn't really that didn't really want to do it. Okay, but he had just paid for for a custom paint job. You know, a couple. Five six thousand dollars. So, oh, wow. who's gonna get him tanks and side covers and shit just so he could be like the rest of us? But you know, it's always gonna be one. Okay. But uh, practically everybody except him had had a yellow bike, and pretty much we was all on cows too. We had a couple couple uh, Harleys. But the Harleys wasn't really doing that good back then. Right. It took them a bit to turn around. Yeah, yeah, they picked them up and turned them around. They saved them, you know. When when the Japanese got into that, that transmission, they decided to quit hooking people, you know, and put some quality shit together. Right. Yeah. It helped them in uh, World War II get their industry back on its feet. So, yeah, they just return the favor. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's only fair. You know, it's, I, I can't. I, you know, I, I always had a fault with them because I never could understand why why they never did put out a good product in the first damn place. You know, you know, you pay that kind of money, stuff shouldn't be falling off. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them many a day. <laughs> Brand new bikes, man. I never will forget, man. The guy just got the damn thing from the dealership. We riding back to the clubhouse and the carburetor fell off. And I'm saying, man, you got to be freaking kidding me. But, you know, uh, it's a different time now for them, and, and it's really good, you know. What do you see as the biggest challenge for clubs going into the future? Probably just, just staying in existence. You know, it's easy to start something, to finish it, okay? You know, I like, I tell my, like I tell my people, this ain't no sprint. This is a marathon when you're dealing with us, okay? You mm-hmm. coming here to be sprinting around. You coming to the wrong damn place. A uh, problem I think a lot of people are facing these days is nobody wants to freaking get out of the couch, much less do a marathon. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's why I tell them don't 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 come here pretending. You're not gonna be around. Don't don't pretend. We still can be friends. Mm-hmm. Everybody wasn't cut out to be a biker. Just like everybody can ride a motorcycle. They might think they can. I mean, had a lot of them come through. Think they know how to ride a motorcycle until they a the motorcycle whoop their ass. Okay, and if, if they're lucky, they they get to live to tell about it. Mm-hmm. How would you define a biker? Define? Yeah. What's a biker to you in your mind? What makes a biker who he is and what he is? Well, you know, we all got bikes, you know. <laughs> but that don't necessarily make you a biker. Nope. You know, a biker is a, some to me is somebody that spends a lot of damn time on the road. But then, you know, like being realistic. 
you know, either the guy had to be a millionaire or a single man, you know, to spend that much time on the road, you know. Mm-hmm. Or broke. Now, the whisper thing would be, you know, your job would be like to just ride around. And the ideal situation was to do that damn movie, man. Like I said, it was like being at a bike annual every night. Okay. I mean, every mm-hmm. night. But you're getting paid for it. Are you know what I That's the ultimate. I think maybe it's uh, what you're reaching for is that it's something in your heart. It's a passion. Yeah, well, you know, it's, <laughs> actually, it's, <laughs> it, you become a, a junkie, okay? You know, like, you got to get your fix. Right. Yeah. yeah. The old lady piss you off. You go out there and do a couple burnouts and come back, and you're cool. Okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least that's what I used to do, you know. Piss me off, I go. Go out there, me and me and my honey. We we. I grabbed me a half a century or a century mark once or twice. I'm cool. I can come back. Here with any damn thing. What's your bike's name? Yellow. <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> oh my! I saw what happened to Yellow in the movie. Uh huh. What's yours, uh, uh-huh. Damon? What's my, your name? My bike yeah, what, name is Medusa. Here's Medusa. I got Black Beauty and Jealous Bitch. And Jealous mm, Bitch is my right. 1980, my 1990 FXRS lowrider. Mm. Hey, ain't nothing like you can't have too many toys, right? If it wasn't That's for, true. For, for JB, if it wasn't for JB, I went and found Mama Ro. Mm-hmm. You can go on my Facebook page and you see me, her, and JB in the wedding pictures. All right. All right, I'm gonna you, I'm gonna have to step away, but it, okay. was, it was a it was a huge pleasure having this conversation with you. Hey, I look forward to another one, man. We got we got to talk some more. And hell yeah, we'll do it. And so uh, it's it's always a pleasure uh, to talk to a founder. Hey man, it's it's it's, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to somebody that want to talk to me, okay? Because <laughs> like I said, shit, I I, I don't want to take the knowledge away with me. I, I want to tell everybody it ain't no secret. It is no secret, okay? Dealing with me because yeah, yeah. I want everybody to know. Heck, I've tried to start conversations with you on Facebook Messenger, but you never reply. Cool. Oh man, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I ain't up on that shit, man. And you, and you how old I am? You're lucky to even get me on the. You can talk to me on the phone. Your best bet is to call me on the phone because I, I I'm not that I'm not that fast on that kind of shit. Okay, being truthful. Well, if you call me on the phone, I can talk to you all, all day and that night. Okay. All right. Good night, guys. Your number number about six months ago, but about a year ago, but. He never did it. <laughs> Good night, uh, Biker Trash. We definitely appreciate you conducting this interview. It was really amazing to um, have you on the show. So, um, You guys are going to see a lot of this. Uh, for those of you who might just be tuning in, we have been spending the last, we have spent the last, oh my goodness, uh, hour probably. I'm not sure how long we've been on. Uh, probably close to an hour. Uh, testing out my new software, my new uh, st- uh, studio. I've uh, made a lot of upgrades. Those of you who remember me in the closet with the eggshells, uh, things have uh, gotten market market have improved markedly, markedly, uh, just uh, huge. Say again. Remarkably. Re, uh, things have improved remarkably as well. So um, the uh, we're we're trying out new software, um, and it's kind of cool. Uh, and I wanted to just. Uh, uh, practice with all of my uh, various toys here and see how everything uh, worked out because uh, I'll be doing uh, all kinds of interviews and stuff um, uh, coming up and um, we will um, I mean you just you guys 
I just can't wait to show you all the, the neat stuff that's going to be coming up with Black Dragon Biker TV. Uh, and Black Dragon Biker News Network. We're going to be doing news. So I wanted to see if all these little toys would work. Um, here, uh, this is the debut of uh, Omar. So if you guys have a video that you want to send <coughs> where you um, support the channel, uh, you can make that video. Uh, this is a... Uh, uh, one of the brothers that uh, watches the channel. His name's Omar. His, his name is actually Black Dragon. The uh, the Black Knight. This is another guy named Black Dragon. And um, the uh, Black Knight uh, has been watching for a while. And uh, he decided to make this video, which is so cool. He pulls in on the motorcycle gets off and everybody that knows that I use nunchucks so uh, I mean there everybody who knows that will understand uh, what he was doing here and then he's got a cool thing like who can hit the pole with a nunchuck ting, 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 ting. that is like so cool you know I went and practiced this as, uh, <laughs> as soon as I saw him do it I couldn't have him doing it and me not be able to do that you know that's not gonna work so, um, uh, if you guys have a video you want to send me, send it to me and, um, on Facebook. If you, uh, whatever you do, if skydive or beat drums or anything like that, whatever you do, send that to me, uh, and like, uh, he, in his video, uh, and I'm still trying to get the sound right. Like some people are telling me they hear the sound. I don't hear it at all. And uh, it's not loud enough, so I've still got to work that out. But, uh, you know, um, my name is such and such. I'm a skydiver, uh, and you drive your motorcycle out of an airplane. That would be real cool. Uh, and and I watch Black Dragon Biker TV. You know, those shout-out kind of videos. Uh, and I'll put them at the beginning of my, uh, of my videos that I'm going to be doing from now on. I'll just... Every time I get a new one of those, I'll put it at the beginning of a video. So I'm definitely thankful for that. Uh, we uh, have Merlin on, and we have Tia. We have the father of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, Paul Pep Perry, and we're testing out. Like, if I was going to do this, so we have Tia and Paul Pep Perry and Merlin on. Probably do something like that. And uh, you know, you can. Uh, I, I I'm not sure of all these toys, but there's some cool toys like. Uh, you can have like a, it, maybe you thought you were com a, a comic or something. You know, the other day I fell off my bike, and uh, I thought to myself, "Well, this is crazy." And uh, I don't know why you guys are laughing because it's really not all that funny. But you know, thank you anyway. I really appreciate that. So, thanks for tuning into the show. No, I'm probably not going to do that in a real show, but I have all these toys to play with, and it's really cool. I've got music. Are you guys ready to mingle? The x one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The x one single, ain't ready to mingle, ain't ready to mingle. The x one single. If you guys piss me off, I'm out of here. I hear it, run. That was a motorcycle. Uh, we have battle cries. So we got, oh, we got background noise. So, you know, this thing is, this toy has so many things. Uh, it was created for podcasting and, um, it is the top of the line podcasting system out there. We got the new microphones, uh, our Shure SM7Bs, sure which are really cool microphones. Um, so we have stepped up our game. We've invested uh, a lot of capital in getting you guys some great content, and that's what we're going to be doing. This is uh, going to be also on our. Uh, we'll be having our daily podcasts. Um, We'll be doing the biker news, and th these are the podcasts that you can go download. And the Dragon Slayer Motorcycle Chaos is where our podcasts are. Uh, anywhere you f get your podcast, you'll be able to get us on the Dragon Slayer Motorcycle Chaos. That's uh, alive right now. So if you get your podcast from Spotify, we're on Spotify. 
you know, iTunes, whatever. So uh, we just hope that you guys will listen to the Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos and check us out on BikerLiberty.com. That's our online news magazine where you can be in touch with the Black Dragon Biker News Network, Biker News you can trust. And um, we have um, the Black Dragon Biker TV on YouTube, that channel. Uh, we have Black Dragon Biker here on Facebook and Black Dragon Biker TV on Instagram TV. So we're going to be hitting all those up. I got so many cool things coming, like we have the uh, the 10 minutes with Black Dragon, because uh, that's all I can get on Instagram TV until I become like a big influencer. So uh, there'll be 10-minute videos. So you can go over there to get little, like the top five ways to leave a club, the top five ways to to uh to to uh uh suspend someone the best five practices to keep your motorcycle uh, uh running right the best the uh, top five ways to make sure you're communicating correctly with the pack while you're riding in formation all those kind of little videos will be over on black dragon biker uh tv on igtv instagram tv so we got a lot coming, uh, and I wanted to test out all of these things and all these interfaces. So we had like five, six people. We had, we have uh, the lovely Tia is on. We have um, the uh, we have Merlin on. We have the father on. We had um, biker trash on. We had me on. Uh, so we had like what's that? Five people, uh, all on talking. So uh, we can take phone calls. Uh, we actually are utilizing two phones, this phone here and this phone up here. Uh, so this, 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 our, our DAW and our, uh, our, uh, uh, interface, it looks kind of like a music studio in here. So, uh, we've, uh, done a lot to up our game so you guys can have the best content, uh, ever. So. Uh, we definitely appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, so Merlin, you were saying something. Oh, I'll just say we had demon on the on with us. Biker trash. <laughs> hey, Paul, I got a question for you. Sure. What do you? What are your thoughts on all, on the on these uh biker TV shows? From an old of, 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 of you, what what were your thoughts hey, about all this stuff? It's great entertainment. <laughs> it's great entertainment, you know. It's, it's it's like a fantasy world. We, we didn't get to do what they do on TV. Okay. They, yeah. if, if that was the case, they would have called in the National Guards and they killed up every damn body. Okay. You know they can do that shit. Do you know that, right? Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So that all of that shit is just a bunch of wish watch. This is TV fantasy, okay? Because if 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 something like that was to go down, trust me, they they'd call in the national guard, and and y'all will be exterminated, okay? Oh yeah. Yeah, well, it's, I, well, hey, look, look. The, the thing of it is, if, if they're getting entertainment and people watching, you know, that's all they want. You know, we have. I, I personally don't have no opinion about it. Hey, they keep making movies, you know. I, oh, hey, anybody from the real world know that? Uh, you know, maybe some of it might be true, but keeping it real, you know, they had to them. Like I said. They call in the National Guard, okay? If they want to really want to kill up some kill up some people, you just call in the National Guard, okay? <laughs> you don't need no police. The National Guard kills everybody, all right? So you know, like, hey, if it's if it's making them getting them sponsors and people that's watching this, more power to them. You know, they got the pretty bikes and stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. If you want to know how the National Guard kills up people, just ask those folks at Kent State, right? So anyway, it looks like we've been doing this for almost two hours, and wow, 
That's too damn long. <laughs> uh, right about this, is the, this this is the maiden voyage, boss. Yeah, that's right. Hey, this is our this is our network. We talk as long as we want to. Well, no, uh, no. Uh, uh, Facebook gives you eight hours. <laughs> you get you get eight hours, and that's it. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, actually, you can go longer than eight hours. You could you could do twenty hours on Facebook, but after eight hours, they delete your content. So, all you get is eight hours. Drew says, "Great show should make this a once a month show," uh, and that's really. Uh, um, and uh, Squeak says, "What's up uh, to you, Pep?" Um, hey, we listening. Yeah. Tell him I say what's up to you. Uh, he hears you, Squeak. Squeak's listening. Our our club brother out in inland empire it's good to see you brother uh steven yeah, wanamaker nice. says it's a great show uh we're having a party here uh, we're getting just beautiful uh beautiful comments and it's so kind of these people to stay on here this long with us it's uh, quite crazy um I'd like to give a crazy shout out good. to all the, the I'd like crazy to give a good to all the top fans saying thank you for uh Watching us and supporting us for everything we do, even if we. Uh, Stephen Wanamaker uh, says it's a great show. Uh, we're having a party here. Uh, we're getting just beautiful. Okay, so that didn't work. <laughs> oh, <coughs> wow! So <coughs> I'm still uh, learning the software. Okay, I screwed that up. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm still learning the software. It's very interesting, but, uh, it, it's really so cool to have so many people on watching us, um, especially all night long. Like I, I didn't expect that, uh, we'd have folks on all night with us. Um, Steven said it didn't seem like this show was that long. It, it all, it all, it's just all kinds of fun. Um, yeah. When, when you're having fun, time just fly. Uh, Jim Schuler says it's been great listening to you guys. Squeak says, uh, "Good to hear you, my brothers," uh, and it's good to see you too, Squeak. Man, it's always good when our Black Sabbath brothers are on. Um, so sure you're right. So uh, we've dropped down to twelve people. So there are twelve people out there that have been listening to us faithfully. John Ojeda and and uh, like. Um, uh, like Merlin said, we really want to thank all of our super fans, our top fans that have been watching us. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for the people that have been buying the books. Uh, we sent out so many books for Christmas. Thank you so much for supporting uh, me uh, and uh, the the rest of the uh, staff of the show. Just thank you so much. Um and thanks for the t-shirt purchases uh, over at blackdragonsgear.com. Just thank you. Thank you so much. We are just humbled. And your support uh, is what bought these bad boys right here. <laughs> your support is what bought all these toys. So if it's a better show, it's because you supported the show. Um, these things right here were not cheap. Uh, so we have, uh, we have these things so that we can, uh, interview people. They'll sound good. Uh, they'll look good. We got, I got a new camera system that's going to come in and it'll, there'll be, uh, multiple angles. So I'll hit a button and you'll be able to see me or the guests, um, at different angles. If I'm, if I'm talking to somebody, I'll hit the button and the camera will be on their face when they talk. I'll hit the button. It'll be on my face when I talk, just like on TV, man. Just like on TV, it's it's getting real out here, and uh, we appreciate that. So um, these uh, remarkable toys and software, I just can't believe that we can actually run a show through a DAW system, a DAW, and interfaces. Uh, we have an actual podca- podcast interface. This interface allows us to make a podcast and... Uh, do this video all at the same time it's really uh like cowabunga it's really cool so um we're definitely thankful um and we we're thankful that you guys tuned in to the show to um 
watch the father and listen to the father, Paul Pep Perry, uh, the first brother to have a motorcycle uh, of the original seven founding fathers. Uh, all of the, f- he got a motorcycle. It was given to him by a friend, a Honda 305 Scrambler. And over the next two years, he got that bike in 1972. And over the next uh, two years, um, him and his brothers learned how to ride motorcycles. And then they all went and bought one, and they started the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation at 4280 Market Street in San Diego, California, in February of 1974. Right? Right, Father? Is that right? I got all that right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're going to say our, our parting words. We'll start with Merlin. Well, Father, it's been uh, always nice to talk with you and learn something from you. You know, I think my first time uh, running in with uh, Black Sabbath where someone came to my aunt's bar, the Sweetwater Inn, off of uh, Sweetwater Road there in National City years ago. Yeah. It closed down. Right. You know, I was I, if if you were one of them, I was the kid running around the pool table shooting pool, whooping everybody's butt. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going out to the street water bar, man. We used to come out there quite a bit. You know, back yeah, then was, we didn't have a whole bunch of places we could go to anyway. Yeah, that was my mom and dad's hangout. So they would. Oh out. man! And how do you keep a kid busy? You give them quarters, go play pinball machine, or go play pool. That's right. Hey, we we had pinball machine and bowling machine, and, and everybody had kids back then. So you know, like they come to the club, and the rule was don't leave the clubhouse. You could do anything inside here, but don't leave the door. Don't go outside. Yeah, with us, it was you know, play pool or, or 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 the pinball machine or whatever, or go out back in the parking lot to play. Right. The main with street. The- Right, the Pac-Man and the centipedes, all the man. We had all kinds of stuff when we moved in. Yeah, so you you was that little kid, man. Damn, small world, man. Oh yeah, like I said, I grew up. I grew up in Black Sabbath territory. Yes, you did. When you talk about the Sweet Water Bar, I remember us going out there. You know, we we used to do that on. On our riding Sundays, you know, we used to go and visit. We used to go out to, to the Sweetwater Bar, and then we used to go out to a place out in Otai, We're off of Main Street. I forgot where, where we used to call this place. Anyhow, yeah, that was that. Uh, yeah, that was when we was visiting. Yeah, Roberta Brown was the owner of the Sweetwater Inn. That was my aunt, my adopted aunt. Okay. Yeah, well, hey, I'm pretty sure, you know, we we came out there, and whenever we came, it was a party, no doubt. Oh, yeah, always was. <laughs> All right. Okay, good I'll talking let, to you, man. You too. I'll let you, anything you want to say or before Dragon cuts us off? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, get, get my number from me. I don't, I, I don't want to give it over there. No, it I'll, might blow I'll, my phone no, 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 no. up. I'll make sure that he gets your number. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I actually he was asking you. Did you have any parting words that you wanted to give? Any words of wisdom or anything like that that you wanted to give to the audience before you left? Oh, well, hey, I'd like to thank you guys for for the interview. You know, it was my first real interview, and I can't wait to to talk to talk get to talk some more and, and tell some more stories. Tell some more war stories, as they would say, as us old timers would say. And Gogo says hi. She uh, just she tuned in a little while ago, and she said hi to us all. So that was very beautiful. Gogo's a former Black Sabbath out of Houston. Uh, I believe she's in Houston, and uh, it's nice to hear from her too. So, uh, did you have any parting things you wanted to say, Tia, or have you gone to sleep or something like that? <laughs> No, I'm not asleep. I just um, wanted to um, say it's a a blessing to be able to um, grow in elevation. That's what I'm feeling right now. And 
it, it's always good. You, you have to find reasons to be thankful and grateful every day. And so um, I just wanted to tell Pep that he is a very um, inspirational person uh, moving forth in my life. And it, to sit and talk to him, it, it's an honor and a privilege. And he is constantly pouring um, just just uh, good things into everybody. I've never seen a negative word come out of this man's mouth. Just nothing but positivity. And um, God really blessed me to be around um, this man who was so amazing to me in my life. And I just wanted to, um, you know, share that. And I, I would like to uh, let people know, uh, thank you for supporting your channel. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> but, great yeah, job. Really yeah, yeah. yeah, you did a great job. and uh, Great job. Yeah, we absolutely um, appreciated that. So, uh, yeah, I've gotten the opportunity to play with my uh, little doll here and having a great time. Listen, people, I just want to thank you so much for uh, tuning into the Black Sabbath, uh, <laughs> tuning into the Black Dragon Biker TV, boy. And uh, it's just really, really neat uh, to be able to share this time with you. This is the longest that I have um, ever. <laughs> Uh, been on this on Facebook, but uh, no, it's not. Oh, oh, uh, with me oh, and Big hey, Silly's do that. Yeah. One thing, Black, <laughs> one, th one thing, Black Dragon. Huh? We need to get back. We we need to get back on YouTube too, because Lady Dragon and uh, oh, not Lady Dragon, <laughs> Iron Iron Head, Lady Iron Head. We're asking about you. Uh, I'm coming back to uh, YouTube uh, tonight or tomorrow. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I didn't expect to take all this amount of time so we will probably be back uh, tomorrow on YouTube I took the time out to build this channel and get it up I want to thank you guys because we got this channel up to 15,581 uh, people in uh, really just at like 2 or 3 months time so that's pretty amazing rise it took me one year to get 3,000 people on uh, YouTube. So to come in three months and get 15,581 followers is just amazing. And we got to 15,000 really in like two and a half months. So uh, we were just flying. Um, and and we, we have been working hard on the content. So you guys, we hope that you like the content. Uh, and we hope that you like the sound. Uh, please send me in your... Yeah, there's a lot of sound engineers and stuff out there. So please listen to the sound and give me the pointers like you guys have always done to get this thing right. We got uh, sound treatment on the walls and, uh, you know, we're just trying to move everything on. We've got gear at blackdragonsgear.com. Go there to get my books and... Uh, my information and things like that, the books, the T-shirts, and all that. We also have a, uh, a merchandise shelf at the bottom of all of our YouTube videos where you can buy our our shirts and everything. We definitely appreciate that. Please go over to BikerLiberty.com and watch our news articles that come out there and give them thumbs up, likes, and uh, comments. We would certainly appreciate that, my friends. Um, and please uh, subscribe to this channel by hitting the follow button and the like button uh, for this channel. If you can hit them both, because they both are important uh, in the way that Facebook counts numbers. The follow button and the like button help us. And this video, if you like this video, I know it's long as hell and most people ain't fixing to watch this whole thing. But if you watched any of this video, uh, three or four minutes of it and it, it did good for you. Please hit the like button on the video and share the video to people that you think might need to hear it because uh, we have the father here and having the father alive and being able to talk to him. The witness, the uh, the uh, wisdom he puts down is not duplicatable. So definitely get your people to listen to this um, 
and, and share it to people that you feel might need it. We certainly appreciate that. We appreciate it if you go over to uh, Instagram TV and uh, like our channel over there, Black Dragon Biker TV on Instagram TV. And we would absolutely appreciate it if you um, uh, went to YouTube and liked our channel over there. Um, at uh, Black Dragon uh, Biker TV and the Biker Black Dragon Biker News Network, Biker News, you can trust. We got all kinds of things coming. Ask Black Dragon segments, uh, just on and on. We're just going to have a blast. So all I can say is thank you guys so much for tuning in. And from myself, Tia Merlin, uh, um, 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 Biker Trash, and of course uh, the father. We would like to say thanks for tuning in. And, of course, get skinny. Thing is frozen it won't turn off this sucks <laughs> wow okay i need to get some memory back here really really oh boy technology turn off please I guess we're going to have to kill it the ugly way. No soft takedown here. Okay, here we go. All right, it's gone. It's it's gone. Boom. Bye-bye. You, you guys there? Yep. I'm here.
Uh, my little brother just got on. In live video. What's up, Cody? Hold on, it's not ending. What's going on here? Man, this thing won't end. I need I need a bigger battery computer. End. Just having too much fun and don't want to stop, huh? Uh the computer's stuck. The software's stuck. It's uh not ending. Just having too much fun and don't want to stop, huh? 